So this is a chisel that I got quite a while back that I've been wanting to clean up for a long time. I got it with a bunch of other old tools that um, I've been meaning to restore for quite a while. This is a Pexto chisel made in the USA. And when I was cleaning up several other axe heads and hammer heads that I got recently off of eBay, I decided to throw this in with it. So here you see all those others. If you haven't seen those videos, I won the Evaporest video and so far I've done one of the axe heads and two of the hammers that came in this lot. So after cleaning it up, one of the things that I thought was really cool was the, the way the chisel looked. You can three, see the three different types of metal. The lighter metal on the on the handle portion, then on the first part of the body it's a little darker, and then the head uh, is even darker, and it's, uh, I assume, the higher carbon ratio in the steel, so that end of the chisel is the, the hardest steel. Um, and here I'm just starting to clean it up. One, there was kind of some, some mushrooming on the side here that needed to be cleaned up, so I just took the file to it first and then sanded it down with sandpaper, taking it down to a, um, a 400 grit sandpaper. And there you can notice there was a few, like some corrosion on the end, right near the, the end of the chisel, and really to clear that off so it wasn't affecting the bottom, I needed to reprofile the edge here. So I took it to my, my one inch belt sander, just to take down that edge to the point where, where it was past that corrosion. And now I'm just reprofiling the edge with the belt sander. Trying to keep it cool also, sticking in water so that I don't lose the, the tempering on the edge. So once that was done, it was a matter of just cleaning it up a little bit. I really didn't want to take away the character that this chisel had. I didn't want to polish it up to a mirror polish. I just wanted to clean it up enough so that it was nice and smooth, especially this bottom side, so that it slid well working on chisels. And then I wanted to clean up that, that edge. I wasn't happy with the profile I got from the, the one inch belt sander. And here I tried first my my axe puck, because I'm an axe guy. I have lots of axes and several pucks that sit in different packs from what I mount. But I wanted to also um, protect this chisel with perma blue. So here I'm going with the, the perma blue, which is, um, I'm not just doing this for the color, it's also protective. It, it helps it avoid rusting. The perma blue is a similar oxidization of. It's similar to rusting, but it um, it won't continue to to rust after covering this. This should protect it as long as that that um, perma blue um, layer is is on the chisel. Hopefully, and that's my understanding of the perma blue. So I'm doing this both one because I like the way it looks. I think it makes it look pretty cool in the end, but um, also doing it to protect it from future rusting. Now just trying to even it up with a bit of um, triple lot steel wool. Uh, this this uh, makes it look a little more even, less streaky, and and helps kind of just buff it up a little bit. Gives it a nice kind of satin polish to it. Now I wanted to clean up the edge again. I still wasn't happy with that edge, and trying to just sharpen it, and seeing what I could do. Next was the, the handle. The handle on this was kind of beat up a little bit and the, that brass ring was uneven. I knew I wanted to clean it up. I thought I'd take it to the belt sander first, clean off the old varnish or oil finish or whatever it is. It may be just like use, I don't know, a patina that had developed on there so I could refinish it, clean it up, polished up that brass and then um, Sanded it first with uh, 120 and then with 220 until it was nice and smooth. So I'm just checking the fit. 
I didn't want to sand too much on that end because I wanted that snug fit to continue. But now here, I'm, I need to repent of this. I know that um, several of you have said that I shouldn't use boiled linseed oil with my hands. And the reason for that, is, it's true, that with chemically dried boiled linseed oil, which is what I have, it uses chemicals instead of boiling to to reduce the linseed oil. And um, that chemical in there isn't good for your hands. If I had boiled linseed oil that was truly boiled instead of chemically dried, I, I'd be fine. Um, so on future videos, I'm going to try to remember to use gloves. Old habits die hard. Um, but I do like the smell of linseed oil. It's like man cologne man perfume, man smell, I don't know, I love it. So just fit in the head now. I pounded it in and it, it fit snug, it's really good tight fit. Um, and initially at this point I was thinking I'd be done and I had stopped on Saturday working on it and then the more I thought about it I was like I really don't want to leave that ring uneven the way it was. So I decided to pop it off and clean things up a little bit. And that's what I'm doing here. First I needed to get it off. And I didn't want to damage the handle much because I want to reset it basically in the same place after I clean it up and straighten out the ring. So once I got that off, just a bit of tapping to, to straighten it out and get it back to round. One side was kind of bent up a little bit from being pounded and lopsided. lopsided. I'm not trying to get it perfect. I want to get it just straighter so it looks nicer. This is a tool I plan on using. It'll be a handy little chisel. And uh, yeah, here I'm just cleaning up the, the previous mushrooming that had been done so that the, the ring can be set back on. I really, again, I don't want to clean up too much off of this because I do want to set that ring back on this handle. The, the handle is just fine as long as I don't go overboard with cleaning it up. It should still fit. Otherwise I'd need to make a whole new handle. And I really like the patina on this one. It's a nice solid piece of wood and this worked. If it didn't I probably would have, but it still worked. Here I'm just now re-mushrooming it just a little bit and resetting that ring just a little bit better on the handle. So I'm hoping the pounding will just hold it in. And really this didn't take a whole lot more and it was set in there nice and snug and tight and I feel like it should should work great. Now like I had mentioned before I wasn't happy with the profile coming off the belt sander, the one inch belt, so I decided to take it to my four inch belt and this actually ended up giving me a much straighter finish and it actually didn't even heat up as much as it was heating up on the one inch belt. Um, I'm not sure why but it really didn't take much to, to get that um, profile nice and straight and a good bevel on it. Much happier with that. Now that it was done though, I needed to just clean up the edge, make sure that there wasn't um, there was a little bit of a, a curl on the end from that sanding on the belt sander, and just a little bit of 400 grit sandpaper took it off. And then here I'm running the, the bevel now with a 600 grit to just clean it up on both sides. And get it nice and sharp. And I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> it didn't, it cut, but not too deep. Um, not enough to like make me bleed, but this was nice and sharp. It feels good. This is on a piece of um, poplar and it's cutting really well and that's just using my hand just pushing um, even though this is a chisel meant to be hammered maybe for making mortise and tenons um, but yeah it's it's carving really nice quite happy with it and that that's the end of that um, it's happy with how this ended up if you haven't already like and subscribe and since I'm a new YouTuber, I really appreciate everything you guys do. So look for opportunities to give those old tools new life.
Ciao.